Hi all. I hope you enjoyed that morning bit session. I thought it's time to look at another Kotov example from the classic book Think Like, the Gra like a Grandmaster. I have been reading around this book recently and also asking my, my chess friends like you know, Alex Eflontis and Kostas Karyanis, you know, what they think. Um, I also stumbled on Soltis's book called How to Choose a Chess Move. And in it, Soltis actually recommends that um, it's good to think of four different thinking models. Um, one of them is prioritization, which is essentially, you know, prioritizing your thinking on one main line, going deep in that. Then the next one is actually Kotov's method, where you know different candidate moves are, as a rule, sort of examined, and you check variations once and once only. And the third and fourth, they're elimination, so you're trying to eliminate rapidly a move to um, to leave the good moves. And the fourth one is. Um, Back and forth, which is something Kotov actually, you know, spoke directly against that you'd waste a lot of time going from one variation to another, and so that was the whole point about being systematic. But um, you know, Soltis argues that even back and forth has some merits in certain situations because you're getting insight from one variation, which might feed another. So that's interesting. That there's actually, basically, there's no golden bullet of this. Um, you know types of analysis. You know how you, how you analyze the position. I know um, I've had multiple choice tests, like Microsoft multiple choice tests. You know years back, I definitely used elimination, so I wasn't quite sure of the right answer. But sometimes, you know, that's a good method if you, if you presented with certain options, just to eliminate the weakest ones as rapidly as possible. So yeah, this kind of put things in context. Anyway, as a prelude. To to Kotov's fifth example, he did say, you know, it's important not to be like an accountant. You know, the art of analysis is um, to try and get the most important variations. And here is the example which started off um, all of Kotov's research. So it does seem to be a very critical position. White to play. And um, if it is white to play here okay I mean first of all I'll, I'll see with with my method which which I'm going to recommend to you is um, looking for resources and looking for trump cards um, so how can we find relevant resources to boost our trump cards and then we'll go and see what Kotov says after so I'm, I'm not going to sort of um, use the Kotov method I'm just thinking well first of all the queen and bishop are a strong battery, so e takes. Looks as though it's almost mating. Black. Um, okay, let's move the pieces. But black has got queen takes f8. So unless there's a way of decoying the queen here, this diagonal can't be exploited. Rook e8. Rook takes e8. There's no decoy. Rook f3. The queen moves somewhere. That's no big deal. So it seems e takes f8 is no big deal here. Let's get rid of that arrow. And that one. So what if we queen? Just queen the pawn instead. Is that dangerous? Because that's another asset, this this past pawn. It seems to be stumbling actually into um leaving this diagonal exposed. So rook takes. Rook takes. And now black might have either rook g one or queen g one. Now rook g1 seems quite dangerous. If king h3, I would say queen h5 is mate. Queen h5 is mate. But what about king f3? So c can the white king survive after king f3? Rubka engine a little bit, or I'll decrease the number of lines here. Um, King f3, and now I think, you know, White would have to consider, you know, Queen d5, is that dangerous? 
It's a bit hairy, isn't it? Because um, king f2, maybe bishop c5. No, no, the bishop's pinned. King f2. Um, but maybe queen g2 is mating. Or queen f7, actually, is picking up the rook. So basically, this, this looks really dangerous uh, with queen d5 here. So is, is this out of the question? White can't play e8 queen. So arriving at that conclusion that either e takes or e8 is bad for white. So we can eliminate those actually. So what about queen takes g7? So then queen. So queen takes g7, bishop takes. So we got that nasty pin and now e8. So it's all with check. So rook takes, rook takes, but it's not all over here. Um, or is it? Actually, it might be, because queen f8, there's rook takes f8, mate. So this does seem um, quite crushing. It is, it is a forced mate. So maybe that's the solution to this kind of tricky position. Queen takes g7 is, is the way forward here to avoid exposure on this diagonal. And there doesn't seem to be too many candidate moves for black. Except here, instead of taking the queen, there's queen f8. Okay. So queen f8 here, what resources are there here? Actually, it seems, again, you know, black is now threatening queen f1, mate. And white does seem to be head of material. So in fact, this looks awful as well. Um, white is actually just a rook down um, with no real um, prospect. Um, bishop g7, that seems a bit harmless. Um, say check, maybe just king h6. Or even king, or just king g8, just, just to stop the checks. All right, let's go back. So this is tricky, as Kotov says. So we've ruled out quite a few moves now in this position. E takes F, E8, Queen G7. Um, let's go to Queen takes G7 again. Sorry, just just in case. So here, there's nothing apart from queening. So what what resources here? Mm. Tricky. I wonder if there is a winning continuation for white now. Um, So what does Kosov say? He asked people in the group to study it in the course of a half hour and write down all the variations um, that they thought should be examined. So they weren't allowed to move the pieces. They examined the position together and examined all, all the possibilities contained in the position. So, um, so one master wrote that... Um, Pawns to king eight was 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 winning, so he wrote uh, rook takes queen, queen takes pawn. Bishop takes, rook takes, and of course that's mating. 